President F. D. Richards said he appreciated the sentiments which had been expressed during the conference, and for the consideration that had been manifested by our brethren of the First Presidency. The people of the world and the people of God had always been in direct antagonism. The conflict had followed down through the ages. The people of the earth have never been able to see the principles of Christ correctly as a whole. The principles of the gospel as revealed from God have been admitted to be the most ennobling by the greatest moral philosophers, aside from religious considerations. Great moralists and scientists have held them to be equal in value to the greatest truths that have been elucidated through them. Repentance of sin is a first principle of the gospel of regeneration. Then comes the washing in the waters of regeneration, followed by the realization of the ministration of the Holy Spirit. These principles were made known to Adam. The first man was informed by God that his offering of sacrifice was a forecast of the coming of Christ and his atonement. It was taught to him that he must be born in the water and of the Spirit. He was caught up in, by the Spirit, immersed in and brought out of the water, and he was born of the Holy Ghost. He was also commanded to teach these things to his children, and if they observed them, they would have the words of life in the world and eternal life in eternity. The very first practical step to be taken after wickedness had appeared on the earth that men might rid themselves of uncleanness was to comply with these principles. This is the foundation that all men have to lay in their hearts that they may be redeemed. Those who are in this congregation and have come from nations far and near know that it was obedience to these things that enabled them to reach their present position. That same priesthood, which is after the order of Melchizedek, has descended from Adam, who was ordained under the hands of God. This is the same authority that exists in this church. There will be yet other laws and principles revealed for the observance of the priesthood besides those already given. If the world are afraid of what exists, what should they do when still more is manifested from God? The saints need not fear. The Lord will sustain them in all times of trouble by His grace. But He makes no promises in regard to the trouble that is borrowed. It would be better if some of the more inquisitive ones of the church did not ask quite so many questions. It is occasionally safe to be able to say truthfully that you do not know some things. People should not be quite so anxious for certain kinds of information. Obedience to the gospel is not only full of peace and blessing for the life to come, but give joy in the present. No matter in what society a man mingles, those who do their duty and are pure and upright elicit the largest degree of esteem. It may not always be openly admitted, but it generally is inwardly. It is with nations as with individuals. Tendency to corruption bring misery and ruin. The fathers of this country who founded the nation came to this land to be free. They framed and adopted the glorious constitution which incorporates more the real principles of good government than any of the instrument ever produced. It was given by inspiration of the Almighty, but men have become so degenerate that they are trampling all of its safeguards underfoot in order to crush the people of God. The First Presidency have counseled the saints to commit no overt act, no matter how great may be the provocation. Remember the words of Christ when his life's blood was oozing from him. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It is painful to see men trample the principles of the Constitution into the dust, but let us pity them a while. The saints have reason to rejoice because a woe is pronounced against them. When all men speak well of them, but they have reason to rejoice when men speak evil of them falsely. It is a time to bring our practical religion into use, and knowing the purposes of God, we can follow in the footsteps of Christ and exercise self-control. This opposition is just what has been looked for. As the work of God spreads, so will this antagonism exist. It is an eternal consequence of our faith. We are on the altar with everything we possess. The saints were told in early times that if they would keep God's commandments, they would from that time begin to prevail, and this promise has been fulfilled. The opposition now developed will go just so far as the Lord will permit. The speaker prayed that the blessings of the Almighty might rest upon the people.